Okay, so this thing cuts me off at a minute. So, oh, this is going to be interesting trying to do this in one minute segments. But I got another story for you. I'm not sure if this falls under men that are flailing and failing and flailing or if this goes under the pests that want to nest and rest because it's a little bit of both here. Uh, but here is a story of another guy who needs to go into his own, what do you call it? The mojo dojo, broham house, whatever. So I'm in training. I don't know how this guy made it here. I'm going to tell you that. I don't know how he got invited to the training because when I tell you like 80,000 people apply to be in our seat, like that's literally a fact. Like it's harder to get into this than it is to get into some Ivy League schools, like literally uh, for this particular airline training. And this guy, I, don't I think it's very... A it's very evident by his um, behavior and the things that he says on a regular basis, always trying to have a freaking um, audience around him to feel sorry for him. I think that he has somehow gotten by on his uh, a little bit of charm and uh, and his looks. Um, when he, we first got here, the first week, he looked amazing. He's a vegan or whatever, so his skin is always perfect. Now we've been here a couple of weeks, so some of that gray hair is coming. He ain't been shaving, all that stuff, whatever. But best foot forward, I mean, Broham like definitely knows how to present well. Like a lot of these uh, hobosexuals, uh, which he probably is that too, which, like a lot of them do. So... Uh, somehow he charmed his way into this training. Um, now will he, so we've been here almost three weeks now and he like, first of all, he failed like his first exam and he passed the retake, which means he has the capability of being able to do what needs to be done, but he won't do it unless he's forced to, uh, typical, oh, typical, oh, there's a word I want to use here, but I don't know if it's appropriate, uh, if you share this. <sighs> Uh, I'll say it rhymes with igotry. It starts with an N. Typical that behavior. Oh my God. It's just so annoying. So on a regular basis, like he's always like, first of all, he pinpointed me. Now that's a whole nother conversation. There are just a few black girls around you. Why are you all up in my face trying to suck on my tit and get me to be your mama out the gate? Get out of my face with that mess. Asking me for my uh, notes and asking me to help him study and all of that. No, no, you're not mooching off of me. You got to earn your own medal around here. So every time I look up, that's what he's doing, telling people about how he don't have no money and asking um, what food do we have in our hotel rooms. Mind you, we get a stipend. He get the same stipend and he's talking about how he has to use his stipend for either bills or food and all this other mess first, and talking about how much his rent is and this and that. First of all, we're all adults. We all got bills. You knew what you signed up for when you decided to come to this training. OK. And like he does, he refuses to do his own work. He acts like he doesn't know how to look up grocery store numbers. And a lot of these little girls are just fawning over him and, oh, let me help you with this and that. And that's how he's probably gotten along so far by people who will, you know, oh, just take pity on him and let me help you be an adult. Let me help you find your vegan options. Boy, you the one that decided to go plant-based. So you figure out how to keep up your plant-based menu when you're somewhere that doesn't accommodate it. It's mad grocery stores around here. He'll come down to the study groups. Now, mind you, study groups, when you come into it, you've already done the work. You've done your homework yourself. You've done your reading assignments yourself. So really, you're just coming to kind of reinforce what you already know, bounce some ideas off each other, just help strengthen the knowledge that you've already gained. He doesn't take notes in class. He wants to hold court and socialize all the time. Mind you, we are all grown people. A lot of us have left our kids to be here to make this sacrifice to level up. And he is not honoring the seat that he is in. And it is so annoying. He is such a bum. And on a regular basis, he is asking people for help, asking for this. At like ask like even in class, he'll ask the teachers annoying I almost curse, annoying questions, which basically you're telling the even the instructors that you didn't do the damn reading assignments because if you did the reading homework, you wouldn't be asking these questions, just wasting everybody's time. So annoying. Then he'll walk up to girls and be like, I need a hug. Like, oh my God, like one of those, like you're asking, you're so needy and you're literally asking for everything all the time. You're asking for food. You're asking for a homework help, i.e. can you do the homework for me? You're asking for the the answers to the quizzes coming up. You're asking for affection. Like, damn, can you just go somewhere? Huh. Like literally a pest, a pest. Whew. 
And oh my God, I just remembered something. The very first encounter I had with him was after our first day of classes. He literally met me in the hallway and was like, I need to study with you because you're smart. It's all like, why is it always with him? It's, I could use you. I could use you. You know, you're, you'd be good for me. It's always like using you. Like they, It's like, we literally are not human beings to them. We are products to be consumed. Like they consume us for their survival and for their thrival. Yes, I totally made up that word. But seriously, like they will stick around and be around only because there is some benefit they're always getting the better end of the deal and i basically like gave him the brush off quick like okay i'll admit i studied with him one time but after that like even before we even got into the studying i was like forget this forget this so i forgot it cuts me off after a minute so i was downstairs with a study group and he purposely i think he came down on purpose like really really late and we were almost over so he can try to corner me into just being one-on-one -on -one with me studying why because he didn't want to expose himself to everybody else which i find this offensive like what was it about me that made you think that you could basically expose your inadequacies and i was just going to take pity on you because honestly like it was all game and so i cut him off real quick the very first time he tried to come down and study with me one-on-one -on -one. because i'm like like less than five minutes into it, he was like, just quiz me on the test questions. But I already know what that meant. That meant you wanted me to basically try to like give you the answers or what I think the answers are going to be. I was like, let me see your, um, let me see your notes. Let me see this and that. He didn't have no notes. Like he refused. And then I was like, no, let me see what you've done already. He was like, no, no, I don't work like that. I'm like, oh, you don't work at all. Bye. And he was like really trying to, and I've seen him hold court with mad females in the class telling him all the crap that he tried to tell me, but I wasn't trying to hear it because I cut his little, I cut his raggedy butt off real quick. And I hear him saying it on a regular basis, like, and they're all just like eating it up like, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, you going, these little girls are going to follow him right to getting dismissed and getting their butts sent home. Talking about, I don't do, I don't work like that. I don't have to do all the reading. All I need to do is just go over the answers or go over the key points and I'm good. Okay, all right. And that's why you've already had, that's already, that's why you've already got your one retake and you only get two retakes and you're out of here. You're gone. Career done. So when I noticed he wasn't even doing the work, like, I literally packed up my stuff and was like, I'm going to bed. Like, and I said to him the next day, oh, yeah. So then um, he failed one of his one of the first exams. And when he got done. So the first time he studied with me, I had gone over a couple of key points. And then I was like, I'm done because I see that this is all you want to do. And this is game. And then I think he copied off of somebody else, too. I think he copied his roommate's notes. So he passed that first exam. That's what it was. The second exam he failed and he kept texting me and calling me so we have like a class group chat so you can like single out a person and he kept doing that and then like I went downstairs to like get my uber eats and he was down there and I was like no and I said to him I said listen I said you like are not entitled to my time my attention or anything else so when you go home that's it like when they they when if you like so you have to get like a 90 percent or better on all of your exams if you get less than a 90 you have failed and you get a retake you get two retakes total not two retakes per test but total the whole time you're here and this training is long and it and it's it's very intense it's federally mandated so it goes like this one is like almost seven weeks long so um he already used one of his retakes so when he failed the next test oh that's what it was so i said to him before as we were all prepping for the next exam i said to him i was like you're not entitled to my time because he kept like getting you know how they get a little aggressive but they're trying to be like friendly or jokey about it like uh, uh honey i've been around the block a bunch i see where you going with this he probably abusive to the girls at home that he left and came here from too i guarantee you because he got a smile on his face but i could feel the tension when i said no he wasn't feeling that and it was a bunch of pushback so i put his bind in his place and from now on, whenever we're in classes and stuff and headed back and forth to class, I don't make no eye contact with him. He'll still try to like make eye contact or something. He gets zero from me because like, no, I know your type and all y'all can go to hell as far as I'm concerned. So um, I said to him, I wound up giving him a little bit of a lecture. And I said, first of all, I'm not your mother. I already have a son at home. And even my even my son, my eight year old son, 
I don't even have to say to him what I'm saying to you. Do your own work. Like, I don't know how you got here, but whatever you, I said to him, I said, since you have started this conversation, that means that you're open to hearing whatever I have to say back. And I was like, whatever you did to get here, it's not going to keep you here. So you better like be willing to basically be teachable, coachable and change because you're going to have to level up if you want to get here, if you want to continue and graduate. Like it's, and you're not getting on the line like this. It's not happening. So sure enough, the next day, exam, 6 a.m. in the morning, and all of this is on purpose. It's supposed to be inconvenient. He failed. So I knew he failed because when we got done and we were all walking back in, there was a crowd of girls around him, most of them younger. You know, like like I said, I'm 40. He's a couple years younger than me. So it was all these little, these young chicks around him and all, and, you know, giving him all this, you know, attention and consoling. Ain't no, this is the big league. Ain't no consoling. Handle your handle your business. No. Like, what are you all in for? If you didn't pass, that means you're not doing the work. So, or it means that this ain't for you, whatever. But, hey, so he failed. So he follows me into the classroom, girl. He follows me into the classroom, walking behind me, because, like, I don't have no energy for him at all. So, basically, you're begging for my attention again. And he says, see, I studied with you the first time and I passed. I studied with you the second time and look what happened. I failed. I spun around so fast that if my weave was not in a bun, it would have lacerated his face. And I wish it could have, because, like, I'm like, listen, like, I tried to be, like, nice about it. Now it's about to get real rude and nasty up in here in front of everybody, because, mind you, he's saying this in front of everybody. So, I I looked at him and I was like, listen, I will not, I cannot, and I will not be responsible for your success or your failure. You failed, not me. You failed. I said, so don't like, don't come at me with this no more. Okay. Like say that for them little girls over there. That's giving you time and attention and pity and whatever else you can go do that with them. Do not bother me anymore about this. You like everybody else here, you're going to have to grab your nut sack, honey. And handle your business. Be a big boy. Put your big boy panties on. And you know what it takes to be successful because you obviously knew what it was take what it took to get in the door. And whatever it took to get you here, like I said before, you're gonna have to do double that to stay here. So like let I'm not talking to you anymore, okay? Like leave me alone. So we got many more weeks to go. Um, no, no, he he's not gay. He's not gay. He is. He's definitely straight and um, definitely trying to. I think that he's trying to like find some sort of romantical. Yes, that's my made up word. Like some romantical connection, just like you said a moment ago. So it could be some chick that you know, because everybody that's here, like everybody that's here, unless somehow you conned your way here, like you're a leader, you're very intelligent. Like it's you know, and and you've got. You got what it takes. And a lot of us have already been in the industry. Half are like brand new to it. And then half are coming in from like other um, uh, from other uh, aviation corporations. I'll say that. So um, but, you know, every once in a while, some people slip through the cracks and present very well. And he's probably one of them, which is why they make it like this, which is why you get to you have to go through so much fire when you're here, you know, and then even when you get out of here, so much fire for a while longer because you got to prove yourself over and over and over again. And it's because of people like him that we have to go through so much stuff because people get, you know, because sometimes the BS gets through the cracks. So, no, I think his whole goal is to try to mix and mingle his way into somebody that he could probably lay up in her hotel room, you know, parlay his way through to get to the line and and to graduate and everything and earn his little wings, not on his own merit, but somebody else's. He has a barnacle. He is a parasite and they are everywhere. He's a, I would say he's not no high level one. I'd say he's a mid level. I don't know. <laughs> Succubus. Oh my God. Just everywhere, everywhere we go. Oh my God. Like the dust is not just global. The dust is the dust is not just global the dust is like it's like it crosses all socioeconomical boundaries and borders it's like everywhere the dust is so fluid it's everywhere even oh my god i'm so sick of this like i'm so like the more and more of this that i see the more and more i can't unsee and the more and more i just want to like i just want to build a mom yoon i want to build a mom yoon or or like a a, a woman yoon I, we need to have barbie land like on every like in every major city of, of america like who's with me to build that because we need that because these dudes like they're so raggedy oh my god